So recognize that in the business day-to-day operations, it can get challenging. You know, um, each day can be different. Uh, different barriers may arise, but you have to identify what is your purpose? What fuels you to keep going? What is the ultimate goal you're trying to achieve? What gap are you filling? What service are you providing in which you're making the world a better place and maybe uh, make the organization that you're working with a better place? Or, you know, what product are you providing to your clients, you know, to improve their life? Uh, Whatever that is for you, um, attach that with your purpose and let that guide you. And that's going to help you overcome the hurdles and help you believe in yourself and help you continue to keep pushing even when things get tough. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a a great piece of advice and uh, a great... Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups into seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Now today we've got another great guest on the podcast, uh, Ryan Warner. And uh, Ryan started out uh, his journey in uh, Chicago and uh, went to uh, high school and college there. I was into sports and played a, a lot of sports. Um, and then uh, in college, uh, or wanted to do something that was health related. And so uh, during college, also worked with athletes doing rehabilitation. During real be- rehabilitation, he also realized that they often needed as much emotional support as, uh, as physical rehabilitation and got an- interested in the emotional and psychological side. So kind of switched gears and went and got a master's and PhD in psychology. Also uh, did uh, about uh, four years active duty in the Air Force um, and then started a consulting business uh, and, and, did, or, uh, and is now doing that full time and uh, working with uh, high level individuals uh, to help them thrive uh, both uh, human, w- with both human uh, behavior and emotional intelligence. So with that much as an introduction, welcome on the podcast, Ryan. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here, David. Thanks for having me. Hey, excited to have you. So so I gave a just gave a uh, quick walkthrough to a, a much longer journey. So why don't uh, we uh, rewind and unpack just a little bit and tell us a little bit about uh, how your journey got started uh, in Chicago? Definitely. So I was born in Chicago, went to high school in the south suburbs of Chicago. Um, and, you know, growing up, I really enjoyed just playing outside and spending time with friends. I would play basketball from sunup to sundown, especially in the summer times when I wasn't in school. And, you know, I just loved, you know, engaging in anything related to athletics. So I ran cross country. I ran track. um, I was even on the volleyball team for about a week or so. (laughs) Um, And ultimately, you know, uh, uh, just being active, you know, was really, you know, uh, brought me a lot of joy and pleasure. So. Right after high school, I immediately went to my uh, to seek my my bachelor's degree, and uh, I went to a large uh, Big T university, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. And ultimately, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, so I started off with just um, you know taking every course I can I, I could. You know, um, I took biology, I took physics. Uh, I was trying to figure out well, yeah, what am I really interested in. And I believe in my second year of my undergrad experience, I then claimed my major, which was community health. And I knew I wanted to engage in something health related, just didn't know what. Um, However, you know, just based on my past athletic experience and also just my interest in health, um, I sought that uh, degree. And part time, I worked as a physical therapist technician. So my job was to work with athletes, was to, my job was to work with students um, and also individuals of all different backgrounds to help them rehabilitate physically. So I would do different workouts with them, different stretches. Uh, if they came in, if they had a broken leg or broken arm or, you know, just had, you know, physical mobility challenges. And when I would help work with them and uh, engage in these exercises, they began to tell me a lot more about their personal life. They began to be vulnerable. They began to express uh, the fact that they experienced depression or anxiety due to their injury or their their physical mobility challenge or their disability. And in turn, I ultimately just listened to them. I validated their experience and I just gave a listening ear. And I would get feedback constantly from patients after they would discharge and they would say, I really appreciate everything you did to help me really rehabilitate physically. But I also even more appreciated how you just listened and how you provided that emotional support and how you just served as my informal therapist or counselor. 
And there, that opened my eyes to the fact that, hey, I think I want to pursue a, a, you know, another degree so I can learn more about how to support individuals emotionally, because I just saw that benefit. And I saw that connection between the mind and the body and how you can't treat one without the other, uh, just based on the fact that so many individuals improved dramatically, not only physically, but also that improved their mental health and emotional health. So right after my bachelor's degree, I, I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison Mad uh, to seek a master's degree in rehabilitation psychology. And my, my goal in the short term was to be a rehabilitation counselor. Um, I wanted to work with individuals with disabilities and provide them support so that they can obtain competitive employment. Um, and when I engaged in my master's degree, I then began uh, engaging in research. I became involved in a lot of work related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and also, you know, I wanted to learn more about emotional well-being and emotional health. And then I recognized, hey, I really enjoyed this master's degree. Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's go on to get a PhD. Uh, so right after that, I then sought my PhD at Marquette University. And uh, seeking my PhD in counseling psychology, my, my goal was to be a psychologist. I want to be a licensed psychologist so that I can have these tools um, to be an evidence-based practitioner so I can understand the research behind what I do and also utilize that research to guide individuals in therapy and in the counseling. Um, so with that, in my PhD, uh, when I when seeking my PhD doctoral level degree, I you know, became even more interested in microaggressions, which are more subtle, covert forms of discrimination, and how that impacted the psychological well-being of historically marginalized groups. Uh, I became interested in military populations and um, how how to best support them. And um, so I then, right after my my doctoral degree, I, I then. Uh, went into active duty uh, four years within the United States Air Force. And immediately once I graduated and became a licensed psychologist, I was director of psychological health at this Air Force installation. Uh, installation in, uh, just one question just on that. Uh, you know, when you go off to do the Air Force and hey, I certainly support uh, those that serve in, uh, in whatever capacity, and it's uh, certainly a great thing. Now, was the intent that you want, you were going to, you know, you wanted to just be in the Air Force, you wanted to join in your server, was it more specific if they had the need for, you know, the things that you'd studied and you were going to go into the mental health side or kind of, how did you make that decision to, to go to the Air Force first? Great, great question. So the military trains individuals to be leaders. Um, and me coming in as an officer, my job was to come in and be a leader, to influence change within the units. And I was really passionate about leadership. I just didn't know how to get my foot in the door. So talking with mentors and talking with others who served um, within the military, they said, hey, this is a great opportunity for you uh, to go in and you can start off at a high level leadership position and you can influence change immediately right after you know you graduate. So that really attracted me to the military. Um, and I had a scholarship that I had in my PhD program and, and ultimately that just led me into active duty. So when I was active duty and I became licensed, immediately I, I was promoted to psychological, director of psychological health. And it was my job on this Air Force installation that had 20,000 individuals. It was my job to promote the mental health um, on the Air Force base. So I consulted with commanders, I went into units, I did a lot of briefs and presentations. I taught individuals different practical strategies that they can implement in their day-to-day -day jobs. I worked with very high level um, leaders um, and individuals with you know, really important uh, jobs and duties um, within the Air Force, uh, pilots and um, you know, just those individuals who are protect our country, right? And working with them and giving them strategies and helping to mitigate the stigma of mental health was really satisfying. Um, and also it directly led into a natural consulting type of position. It was my job to consult with the 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 pretty much the mayor of the base and pretty much say, hey, these are the challenges that we're seeing. Um, and here are some strategies uh, that I recommend based on my expertise. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really satisfying. And naturally, um, that led me to think about, hey, how can I you know, do more of this like within the community? Um, and. I started to just volunteer in the community. I started to do a lot of work related to diversity, equity, inclusion, and promoting workplace wellness. And in turn, I started to get paid part-time um, in this role. So I started my own business. Uh, I got approval from the Air Force to 
uh, you know, have a, a have a part time small business. And um, I started to just do it part time in my spare time. Um, and in turn, it grew. Uh, I began hiring full time staff. <laughs> I had, I was taking uh, PTO to ultimately go out and do speaking engagements, and uh, yeah, it really blew up very quickly. And um, then I recognized, hey, there was a time in which now just uh, one quick question: Is you're going out and you say, okay, I'm going to start this this out as a part time thing while I'm still in the Air Force? Kind of what was uh, what was the focus of the business? Was it you know you mentioned it was helping the community and, and kind of getting involved. But was it kind of providing the same services that you did in the Air Force, but to on a private level? Or did you go in a different direction or expand things or kind of walk through a little bit of what you focused on? Great question. So I work with a lot of non-for-profits, also Fortune 500 companies um, and large institutions. And ultimately, they brought me in to improve inclusion in the workplace. So uh, they looked. I, I was looked at as a, as a diversity and inclusion expert. Uh, obviously, I, you know, I did a lot of work related to microaggressions and, um, uh, you know, and ultimately they wanted me to come in and, and do different trainings and facilitation and workshops. Um, and ultimately, those speaking engagements led to consulting opportunities, more long term projects um, and also executive coaching work as well. So that's the work that I did to ultimately improve organizational performance and effectiveness uh, and, and in turn started my own business. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> so now I'm now out you, of the- And give us an idea, you know, is you doing this as a, you know, I'll say side hustle or part-time uh, gig as you're getting started, kind of over what period of time did you do it as on the side versus, and then, or how did you decide when it had reached the level to where, you know, you're going to jump over this full-time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so when I start to recognize that, you know, I couldn't manage, you know, both of those opportunities, I couldn't give my full attention, right, and give my all in the military and also, you know, give my full attention to my business. Um, and then I hired, you know, full time staff and even they were struggling to manage everything. I, I recognized there that uh, that's when, you know, maybe I should, you know, try to separate from the military. So, um, yeah, I separated at four years and and now I'm working in this uh, my business full time, working with organizations across the globe. That's awesome. So now, so you make the the jump, go full time, go you know private or um you know or pin or wrap up the the service to them in the military, the Air Force. Uh, now, as you jump over and do that full time, was it a pretty smooth transition? Did the things just kind of continue to grow and take off, or was it rough or figuring things out, or you know nerve wracking because you never know where your next paycheck's going to come from, or were you making more money than you knew what to do with, or kind of walk us through as you made that and made that kind of the full time focus uh, how things went. Yes, yeah, so I think having worked part time, you know, for what two years, um, led very smoothly into full time work. So I didn't really have to worry about where the next, you know, work was coming from because I created that client funnel um, after, you know, two years part time, um, and uh, ultimately that created, you know, more confidence, you know, in me doing this work full time. Uh, so it just naturally led into that. Uh, so I had that safety of a, you know, full time nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it grew to a level in which, you know, uh, my salary was obviously way more than, um, you know, in my business than my uh, my military career. So it made sense uh, both financially and also uh, just with the personal goals and professional goals I have, you know, to go into that full time work. Oh, that's awesome. So, so now you make the, the leap, go full time. Things are going well now. Or give us an idea as far as time frame. How or when when did this occur? When did you make that uh, that jump over? Yeah, so in November 2022, I officially separated active duty um, and until now. I mean, so I've finished my first year full time and now we're going into, you know, um, this uh, new year, 2024. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. And uh, there's also challenges, you know, that always come up. But uh, yeah, definitely enjoy, you know, waking up each and every day is always something new. No, that's awesome. So now with the, so now you've been doing this for a little over a year, continue, you know, you've been doing it longer, but full-time a, a little over a year. And now mm -hmm. as you continue to put a full-time focus on it, bring people on kind of, if you're to look out to the next six to 12 months, kind of where do you see things headed? What are the next steps or kind of uh, where do you go from here? Great question. So now we're looking to scale. Uh, currently right now, it's a lot of you know, I'm very involved in the operations of, of the business. And so I'm looking, the next step is to scale the business. We have a lot of asynchronous trainings that we had, that we completed. Um, and we sell for like different coaching packages. Uh, and we also sell to other clients so they can, you know, tap into these educational resources, 
you know, whenever they like, you know, instead of, you know, live presentations. So a lot of our work are going, instead of engaging in live, you know, facilitation and keynote talks, it's more like uh, asynchronous, professionally shot trainings um, that we can now scale uh, and help, you know, so many organizations, you know, boost inclusion and wellness within the workplace through that ed education and through that knowledge. Well, that's awesome. So it sounds like some uh, great, uh, great possibilities yet to come and some uh, great opportunities. So well, with that, now as we've kind of reached the, the present day of the of the journey and even looking a bit to the future, I always like to wrap up each episode with the same two questions. So we're going to jump to those now. So the first question I always like to ask is along your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made? What did you learn from it? <laughs> great. So I think a business decision, I'm not sure if I can think of a when I'm like logistical mistake I made, but I think it's more of what I wish I would have done earlier is believe in myself a little bit earlier, you know, so challenge some of those um, self-limiting beliefs, right? Because uh, some of the beliefs that came up were, I don't know if I you know, have enough experience to do this type of work, right? Or what happened if it doesn't work out? Or maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I don't have enough connections, right? So all those self-limiting beliefs, you know, I think may have held me back a little bit, but then as I began to improve my confidence, you know, and believe in myself more and recognize that there are no heights, you know, um, there are no limitations to how far this organization, this business can go and the reach that we can have and the impact that we can make, um, that then in turn, you know, I saw that benefit, right? So if I, if I would go back, I think the one thing that maybe I could have improved on is believing in myself and challenging those, those unhelpful thoughts um, and those self-limiting be beliefs a little bit earlier. No, I think that, that, you know, that was hard, you know, and it's it's one where you have a mixture of everything from, you know, what should I do? How should I do it? When should I do it? You know, and I also, if you, you know, do I, does it make financial sense? Am I going to jump off and wish I'd gone, you know, want to go back? And so a lot of times you hold back and yet it's oftentimes once you get there and you decide to make that leap, it's one where you wish you'd look back and you say, I'd love to get started a bit earlier. So definitely a easy mistake to make, but a great one to learn from. Mm -hmm. Second question now that I like to ask. So now if you're talking to someone that's uh, just getting into a startup or a small business, what would be the one piece of advice you give them? So recognize that in the business day-to-day -day operations, it can get challenging. You know, um, each day can be different. Uh, different barriers may arise, but you have to identify what is your purpose? What fuels you to keep going? What is the ultimate goal you're trying to achieve? What gap are you filling? What service are you providing in which you're making the world a better place and maybe uh, make the organization that you're working with a better place? Or, you know, what product are you providing to your clients, you know, to improve their life? Uh, whatever that is for you, um, attach that with your purpose and let that guide you. And that's going to help you overcome the hurdles and help you believe in yourself and help you continue to keep pushing even when things get tough. Mm, no, I think that's a, a great piece of advice and a great takeaway. So, well, now, as we wrap towards the end of the episode, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an investor, they want to be an employee, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, find out more? So definitely, uh, after you hear this podcast, feel free to reach out to me and say, hey, I listened to the podcast um, and tell me your thoughts. You know, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can type in Ryan C. Warner, uh, PhD will come up, or you can Google my name, Dr. Ryan C. Warner. Uh, my information will come up that way. You can also visit my website at www.rcwarnerconsulting.com. Um, those are the best ways to reach me. So hopefully you reach out. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this podcast episode and be happy to support. Awesome. Well, I definitely encourage people to reach out, uh, make a new connection, support a great business, and if nothing else, uh, make a new best friend. So with that, thank you again, Ryan, for coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you that are listeners that are out there, if you have your own journey to share and you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, we'd love to have you. So let's go to inventiveguest.com. Apply to be on the show. A couple more things as listeners. Make sure to click share, subscribe, leave us a review. Helps us to reach even more startups and small businesses to um, help them along their journey to success. And on that note, if along your journey you ever need help with patents or trademarks or anything else with your startup or your small business, just go to strategymeeting.com grab some time with us to chat and we're always here to help well thank you again ryan for coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last thanks so much